Rebuilding a Bernac Vulcan model steam engine toy part 14. Machining the thicker gauge boiler barrel to fit the mounting base and transferring the positions of the firebox cutout and the mounting holes from the old to the new boiler barrel using a method that is not exactly engineering but it works. It's probably a good time if you're a proper expert engineer to turn off because you really won't learn anything from this episode. But if you're not a proper engineer and not into proper engineering, just quick and simple methods, then this is the one for you. This piece of copper that I'm using for the boiler barrel is a thicker gauge than the original, as you can see from this image. I'd love to say that this is intentional because I'm going to make the boiler run at a higher pressure, but it isn't really. It was just a piece of copper tube I found in my box of pieces of copper tube. The first thing to do is to get my digital caliper out and measure the original boiler's internal diameter. And for this job, I don't even need to switch it on. I just need to know what the original diameter of the boiler is. I will then use the digital caliper when I start to machine the new boiler barrel. No time like the present, and I've decided to use my largest lathe that I have in the workshop, a Smart & Brown Model 1024, which generally is fitted with a four-jaw self-centering chuck, which holds pieces of copper like this very securely. I'm using a small boring tool just to reduce the diameter of the end of it. I didn't show the boring operation because, well, it is boring. Suffice to say, I finished off the job with a piece of emery cloth. By using a thick pad of emery cloth folded over, I managed to keep all of my fingers intact. Here I'm checking that the base fits into the recess that I've machined in the boiler, and indeed it does. It's a very good fit. It's just as good a fit as the old boiler shell, possibly a little bit tighter. Here when I put the new boiler barrel on top of the base and then lift the whole assembly off the bench, the base remains connected to the barrel and doesn't fall off. Any engineers watching, now is the time to turn off and watch someone else. But for the rest of us who are not that talented in the art of operating machine tools, Maybe you should watch this. In my opinion, this is possibly the quickest and simplest way of transferring openings, orifices and holes from one piece of tube to another. You do need some specialist tools though. The first thing you need is a birthday card. Because this card is a perfect thickness for what I'm about to do. I don't know why it is, but in the workshop that's built onto my house, I cannot find a ruler. I keep bringing them down from the main workshop, but then they disappear. I'm fast running out. I must be putting them somewhere safe. I'll probably find them in a box somewhere. It doesn't really matter, because this method works perfectly well. I just roll the piece of copper tube against the card and put a pencil line where it touches it. And now, using a small pair of scissors, I cut along the line, which leaves me with a piece of card exactly the same height as the old boiler barrel. The next thing to do is to wrap the piece of birthday card around the boiler barrel. Mark the joint with a pencil at both ends, then draw a line between the two points and cut it once again with the pair of scissors. Before proceeding, do a quick test by wrapping the piece of birthday card around the boiler to make sure it's a tight fit. Then start to secure it with a length of sellotape, or masking tape, whichever you prefer. When I wrap Christmas presents, and believe me, I really am not good at it, I always do it this way. I cut lengths of sellotape and stick them to the bench. Then I remove them one at a time to wrap the present. And that's what I'm doing here. Before using the sellotape, you have to hold the card very tightly around the boiler. Then apply the sellotape. Now it's time to find the hole positions. And the easiest method I can think of is to use a pencil point. It will only go through the card where there is a hole in the copper. Once I'd got the positions of the holes using the pencil, I drew the position where the burner goes with a felt tip pen. And I did this from the inside. Once that was done, I removed the card wrapper from the old boiler shell just by sliding it off. Then I cut out the fire hole position using a pair of scissors after which I refitted the wrapper to the old boiler shell 
and made a better job of trimming it using a Stanley knife. Trimming the cardboard tube with a pair of scissors wasn't accurate enough. Once the fire hole opening was the correct shape, once again I removed the wrapper from the old boiler barrel. Now I need to slide the birthday card wrapper onto the new boiler. It's all sounding very simple, but there's a catch. On the new boiler barrel there is a scratch, and this is actually quite useful. What I'm doing here using a piece of wood is making a felt tip pen line along the slight scratch mark to the end. This gives me a centre line, and I need a centre line for two reasons. I'm going to fit a proper water gauge to this engine, one with a blow-down valve and one that actually looks like a full-size one, although it's much smaller. I'm about to mark the position of the fire hole. That's why I've been using the tape measure to make sure that the line is exactly in the centre. Here I'm just truing up the line slightly with my felt tip pen using the mahogany block. And here, for no other reason than to pass the time, I'm shading in the area of the firebox. This will show where I need to cut out the firebox, and it also shows that the centre of the firebox corresponds with the line in the centre of the boiler. I've written on the new boiler shell water gauge, and here is the approximate position of the water gauge. I will drill some holes at these points to take some phosphor bronze bushes that I haven't made yet. And there you have it, a non-engineering project that works perfectly well. Sometimes the simplest methods are often the best. That's it from me. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.